Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head through to Glasgow once again, but we're going to visit a brewery who I have never tried anything from, and these guys are fairly new on the block as far as I understand. So for this review, we are going to try my first beer from Overtone Brewing, and we're having a look at their Rwandan Coffee IPA, which comes in at 7.5% ABV. And this beer is kind of a collaboration with Deer Green, who are one of the coffee roasters through there. Now, I'm a huge fan of Coffee Imperial Stouts. You've, if you've been watching my channel before, you'll see the, the coffee stouts that I've reviewed from the likes of Dugas Bruggery back home in Sweden. And uh, I, I love the style. I have to say, this is the first ever coffee IPA that I've reviewed for you, but I think I have tried one in a bar somewhere. I have no idea who it was that brewed it, but I remember thinking it was really unusual, but it's one of these things that somehow does work. So I'm really curious to see this one. I bought this beer in the Good Spirits Company, their little beer shop that they have through in Glasgow and um, there was a few other things from these guys they told me this brewery is very good they had some New England IPAs that they recommended but this was really the beer that just caught my eye because of how unusual it is and that's what you want when you've reviewed about 1800 beers so really curious to see how this one turns out hopefully it's a good introduction to Overtone Brewing and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer and I'm sure I'll review more from these guys in the future because like I say very highly rated so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Overtone Brewing. Very first time I'm reviewing one of their beers, as I said. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you, that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Overtone Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So as I've mentioned to you earlier on, Overtone Brewing are based in Glasgow and they were founded back in 2018 by Bo Wei Wang who is originally from Beijing in China as you might have guessed from his name. But he has a, he's been a home brewer for a number of years before he actually founded the brewery and the name of the company Overtone comes from his love of music. But Bowie hired Dan Miller who's originally from New Hampshire in New England in America as his head brewer. He'd previously worked as a head chef for a period of time but also as a brewer in England and New York as well as in Scotland for Six Degrees North up in Stonehaven who by the way are also another really good Scottish brewery that you need to check out. Belgian style beers and they're pretty awesome actually. But also uh, involved at the brewery is Martin Conaghan and he'd worked in the craft beer scene in New Zealand for a good number of years as well and he'd take, he takes part in the brewing and does various other bits and bobs around the brewery as well. But the brewery itself can actually be found in the new Albion Industrial Estate in Yoker which is near Renfrew in Clyde Bank, a little bit out to the west of the city. I did smile when I actually found that out because whenever I hear Yoker I think of that sketch in, in um, on the Lemmy show, Dee Dee on the bus. You know, that's what I always think about when I hear Yoker. But this brewery actually don't have a fixed range. They're always producing different beers. And as of September 19, uh, 2019, according to Untapped, they've produced just over 30 different types of beer. So a very new brewery on the block, but one that seems to be getting a lot of plaudits. And, you know, for a brewery that's only been in existence, like, what, about a year and a half, maybe two years, um, you know, it's to have 30-odd beers, I think it was 33 was the exact number when I checked it, that's pretty impressive. So you know, basically, a new beer every two, uh, you know, two be two new beers every month, basically. So pretty impressive. And like I say, a lot of people in Glasgow in the beer shops were telling me this is a brewery that you need to check out. So yeah, that's all you really need to know about Overtone Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website, follow them on Facebook and Instagram. That'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on. And if you're interested to see the different beers that they do, I'd recommend that you check out the Untapped and the Rate Beer pages for this brewery as well. But anyway, just. To to tell you a little bit more about the beer itself actually before we taste it. So as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is a 7.5% coffee IPA. It's brewed in collaboration with Deer Green who are a coffee roastery through in Glasgow and apparently they visited the Nyakizu washing station in southern Rwanda and the coffee there is known for having flavours of brown sugar uh, with plums and a little bit of a juicy acidity to it. But the coffee bean in this one is a red bourbon arabica variety which is grown at 1750 MASL which is metres above sea level 
example. And the one thing I actually didn't know is that the height above the height at which coffee beans are grown that has a massive effect on the flavour. So when it comes to actually growing coffee, um, I think they said it was above two thousand uh, meters above sea level. Um, you really start to get some very very interesting flavours out of the out of the the coffee. So I really had no idea about that. But I know coffee. Um, a lot of people are going into you know look at it's almost like craft beer these days. There's so many different coffee bean varieties and things like that too. And I think that's why you're starting to get a lot of these coffee imperial stouts and things like that. The coffee beans can add a huge complexity to uh, to the flavour of a beer and especially in imperial stouts. But like I said, the first IPA that I've tried with coffee beans in it. But yeah, that's all you need to know about the beer for the moment. It says on the back here the hops and things. Um, Simcoe Citron Cascade and the malt bill is Turo from America, Maris Otter which is English and Carapils which is a German malt, probably from Weirman that, but the yeast in this one is a California ale yeast. And it says here, Dear Green visited the Nyakizu washing station in southern Rwanda last year. The coffee here has a super juicy acidity with notes of plum and brown sugars and sweetness. It's paired perfectly with this malty, creamy, slightly sweet pale ale. Uh, a good amount of Simcoe, Citra and Cascade added to pull it all together, giving you a well-balanced coffee IPA. So, yeah, nicely presented. Uh, you know, nice kind of choice of things there. As I say, this is just a very, very unusual beer to look at, but you know, um, it's one that I think will be a little bit of an education. Nice artwork on this one. The artwork, of course, is supposed to represent, you know, like sound waves and all of this kind of thing. Uh, it's basically meant to be musical from what they were saying on the website. But yeah, nicely presented this one. This is a 440 milliliter can, but let's get it out and get on with the tasting. A 7.5% IPA with coffee beans from Rwanda. So yeah, I'd love to go to Africa one time actually, but of course, my attention has been more on uh, Asia recently and probably it will be South America will be the next one but yeah I have to admit I expected this one to be a little bit darker in colour than this considering the coffee beans but in fairness you know most of the beers that I've had with coffee beans in them have been stouts so interesting to know that that the coffee beans don't give you too much of a, a dark colour to the beer. I wouldn't have thought that to be honest but yeah as you can see with this one it's poured a lovely kind of bright goldeny yellow colour. If I shine the light through it, it doesn't, it has a little bit of an orange tint to it, but mainly it's quite, uh, you know, it is yellow rather than anything else. There's a solid two-thirds finger of a frothy, I would say kind of cream ivory coloured head on this one actually, you know, it looks pretty good. Um, behind the, you know, at the bottom of the glass you can see there's a few little bits of sediment there. If I stick my fingers behind the glass there is a good degree of haze to it. One or, big two, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass too and a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall um, it looks pretty nice. I have to admit, as I said, I would have expected this beer to be a good bit darker in colour but you know, it just looks like a fairly um, kind of standard New England uh, IPA to be honest with you. I didn't expect that from it at all. So yeah, let's look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. Oh, yeah. Now, that's really interesting. I mean, it's it's almost... It almost comes across as being a little bit like a latte. I mean, I have to say, I don't drink coffee at all. Very, very rarely, you know, very rarely drink it. I've maybe had one or two cups in Germany. The German coffee it was always quite nice. But I never really drink coffee at all. Um, yeah, that's that's a really beautiful smell and beer that. Um, and as I said, you know, coffee beans can add such a level of complexity to the um, to the the aromas and also the flavour profile of a beer, especially in a, an imperial stout. I've no idea about a coffee IPA, but um, yeah, that's lovely. So straight away with this one you're going to get that big smoothness of the coffee there you can really smell the the smoothness of the malts in there too i mean like i said they've got turo and maris otter and turo um gives you this lovely bready and biscuity quality and maris otter will give you the same they're just the, the maris otter is just a teeny little bit more grainy than the turos in my experience but there's lots of different types of turo they've not said exactly what type of turo it is on here um but it's got that lovely smooth um kind of white bready base to it you can definitely smell a little bit of that biscuity almost like a mcvitie's digestive thing coming out of the beer but it really smells like the, with the bread the coffee is just like infused into it it's really interesting how that kind of goes together and the carapils, of course, it will give you some similar aromas to that. It will give you a little bit of that biscuity, um, slightly caramelly note, but usually it's a bit more kind of crisp. Um, but yeah, this beer, it really does smell big and bready in the base, like the coffee beans are infused into that. 
and then when you take it in a little bit more deeply, you get these biscuity, caramelly notes out of it. And it's the coffee that's really giving you the complexity to this one. It, as I say, it comes across, it's really smooth, and you can really pick out, to me, there is a good, I've always found that coffee comes across with a bit of a roasty aroma, you know, regardless of what it is, more, some of them more so than others. So you do get that little bit of a kind of roasty quality from the coffee in there, and a bit of, there's a little hint of earthiness there too, I think, but you can really smell the, 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 that roasty, that kind of roasty and earthy base that the coffee has, it does have a little bit more of a brown sugary element. Some of these coffee beans, as you know, when I reviewed the Sidamo Dim Tu from uh, Dugas Burgery, that had a really aromatic quality to it, but you can really smell with this one that it's um, above that roasty and, uh, you know, above that roasty earthy base, it does have those kind of brown sugary notes in there, which is nice. Um, and it's quite... Um, you know, it's quite a toasty brown sugar to be honest with you. So yeah, I like how everything is going together in this aroma. This isn't de this isn't one of the more pungent aromas you're going to come across in the craft beer world. It is more just about how these flavours kind of merge together, if you like. And it is very very nicely done in that regard. It's all about the subtleties. There's maybe a few kind of slightly woody undertones to this beer as well. Maybe even a little, maybe even a little teeny bit of vanilla or something. But that's very very minimal. I'd say it's more woody rather than anything. But yeah. That's it's really interesting how that aroma comes out. In terms of the fruity side of things, then um, I'm not getting much in the way of um, the, the there are there is a little bit of a kind of red fruity note in there. I don't know if I would have picked it out as being plums right enough. They said it was you were supposed to get plums from this. Um, I'm not sure if I would kind of pick it out as that. I think it's a little bit kind of figgy, but in fairness, it does have a little bit of the sharpness that you would expect from plums. But to me, it's a little bit more juicy and uh, and figgy. You can smell a little bit. Of the uh, the kind of grapefruity qualities that you would expect from uh, from Cascade, and you can smell some of that distinctive kind of floral aromaticity that you'll get from Cascade as well. Um, and the cas the Cascade, it's it's almost it's not quite as pronounced and spicy as like Columbus, for example, but it's a little bit more kind of pronounced than, for example, the German noble hops like Hallertau and Titnanger and things. And um, the Simcoe and Citra, you know, they're giving you a little bit of a kind of tropical note out of this. You can pick out a little bit of a a sort of mangoey quality in there. You can definitely pick out some of the tropical fruit underneath because usually Simcoe will give you passion fruit. I don't find that um, too readily in here. I'd say it's more the mangoes from the citra that are coming out. And Simcoe, of course, compare it to Galaxy. Galaxy is very pungent in its passion fruit notes, whereas Simcoe I've always found is a little bit more kind of milky and things like that. But it's got a nice juicy tropical fruity note in there. On the hoppy side of things, it's got a nice kind of floral quality, mainly from the Cascade, which I'd guess is being used as the bittering hop. And you've got a little bit of grassiness in there as well. I'd say the green side of the beer leans towards that floral grassy side of things rather than the earthiness. So overall, a really kind of interesting aroma with this one, particularly with a beer as unusual as this. Take a bit of time and just enjoy that aroma before you actually try it. But let's have a taste of this beer and just see how we get on. So this one is the Rwandan Coffee IPA coming in at 7.5% from Overtone Brewing in Yoker, DD on the bus in uh, Glasgow here in Scotland, a collaboration with Deer Green, who brought the coffee from the Nyakizu, um, the Nyakizu plantation, I don't know if you can say that, in, Rwa in southern Rwanda. Let's get stuck into this beer. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh, yeah. That's, it's very nice. It just takes you a minute to get your head around it, to be quite honest. <clears throat> yeah, um, it really will. It will take you a little bit of time to get your head around this beer. Um, it comes in and it's just like a normal IP and you're like, right, where's the coffee? And then it, the coffee comes out more in the aftertaste. The coffee um, is more of a subtlety in this one. And I mean, I'm guessing here, I've got a kind of basic knowledge of brewing, but I would guess that probably... Um, they've added a fairly minimal amount of coffee to this, and I'd be, cu I'd be curious to know. I would think that when they're um, going by the colour of this beer, I would think that maybe the coffee beans have been added um, in the fermentation stage rather than in the boil. Um, and that, you know, that I think that would, I don't know if that's standard to be honest with you, but I think that's probably how it is, because it does come across as being a more infused flavour. 
So I would I would wonder if the if the coffee I, that would be my one question about this. Do the coffee beans go in during the the boil when you're adding all the malts and extracting all the sugars and stuff like this, or does it go um, in when you're fermenting it? And I mean I have to admit if they did put it in the boil, I would have suspected that this beer would be um, a lot darker in colour because um, you know the other chemical you know the other stuff in the coffee bean would come out from that. So I think they've added the the coffee beans to this during the fermentation, and that's how the flavour is infused. Using my chemistry knowledge, my master's degree was good for something, but um, yeah, this is a lovely beer that it gets a big thumbs up from me. Like I say, this is one of these ones that you try and you just need to, um, you just need to try and get your head around this a little bit because there's a lot going on here. So straight away with this beer, middle of your palate, you can feel those bready qualities that I was talking about, both from the Maris Otter and the Turo. You get that lovely white bready quality that blankets the middle of your tongue. The more you go into the aftertaste, the more it comes across as being a little bit kind of brown bready, whole mealy, grainy type thing. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't have the sort of spiciness you might associate with it having those flavours. It is very, very smooth. Um, but both, yeah, both Turo and Maris Otter are going to give you that. Carapils is more of a crisp malt. Um, and I would say, yeah, the Carapils for me doesn't show up as much as the other two, but that's just me. As remember, beer is always subjective. You might interpret flavours a little bit different from me. But yeah. Um, you can feel that lovely smooth white bready quality there and the further you go into the aftertaste the coffee flavours for me come out a little bit further forward on the palate um, and you can really you can feel that sitting there but um, if you go along the sides of your tongue almost to the front corners and then inside a little bit you'll get a little touch of a woody quality kind of pushing its way out of this beer which is nice um, and that's just a very subtle a, a little subtlety there But that's a lovely beer. You know, this is what you want when you've reviewed so many beers. You want things that are going to make you think a little bit, um, you know, rather than just a, another New England IPA. Um, but yeah, not that there's anything wrong with those, but you want things like this that are quite different. Um, but yeah, so for me, um, in the centre of your palate, you will pick up a little bit of a kind of... Um, slightly brown sugary sweet, so it comes across as being a little bit biscuity, almost like McVitie's Digestives. Um, and I really like how that all goes together. I like I like how everything is kind of infused in there. Um, if you go further forward, like I say, that's where you get the coffee bean notes. And like I said, this coffee it is very very smooth. Actually, you do have a little bit of that slightly roasty quality in there. The earthiness that I was picking up in the aroma wasn't um, isn't so apparent in the flavour. Um, and you can pick out those brown sugary notes that it has. You know, the brown sugar for me in this in this kind of coffee bean is quite obvious. And it's it's strange this because usually when you get fruity flavours in a beer, it's behind the front curve of the tongue, or if they add fruit to the beer, it's around the front edge of the tongue. But then you've got fruity flavours from the coffee bean sitting um, just slightly to the front of the middle of your palate. You really get this, to me, as I say, it's got a little bit of that sharpness you'd expect of, of plums or raisins or something to it. Um, but to me, the fruity notes from the coffee are really leaning a bit more towards the, the sort of figgy end of the spectrum. They're a little bit more like that, to be honest, in my mind. Um, but yeah, it's really nice how this beer goes together. As I say, it's quite an unusual one, this, but it really does work. I mean, it's like Trying this beer is honestly a little bit like when I first tried a black IPA, you know, you try it and you're like, what's this? Um, but, you know, when you have a few sips of it, you really do like it. Um, but I guess, you know, with all these variety and beer styles now, we are a bit more open-minded to things that are different. But the malt base in this beer is, um, is absolutely cracking. I mean, I, I consider, you know, the coffee is an adjunct technically, but you know I think the way all these flavours are working together is really quite nice. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate there is a little bit of earthiness there. I'm surprised when you consider the hops in this, but there is definitely um, a bit of earthiness there. That builds a good bridge between the coffee notes that come out in the aftertaste. As you come further forward, it just smooths out a little bit. It really, yeah, it just smooths out a, a little bit there. And it's almost... It's not really, it's got a little touch of a herbal quality, but then as you reach the front corners of the palate, that's where you get a little bit of that bit, that nice floral aromaticity that you would expect from the uh, from the cascade. Then as you go around the very front curve of the palate, it's just a little bit lighter and more um, grassy in my opinion. Um, and then behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that oily bubble where the fruity esters roll out of the beer.
And what I would say is I wasn't picking up so much of the passion fruit in the aroma from the Simcoe, but it's quite obvious in the flavour. So if you go to that oily bubble, um, and if you go right to the back of it, you get a little touch of a slightly, you know, passion fruit is a, a slightly more dark, pungent flavoured fruit compared to like mangoes, for example. So the Simcoe comes out at the back of that, um, but then as you come further forward, it m gradually moves in towards the more mango flavours that you would expect from Citra. And then on the very kind of front, curve of your tongue if you like, you're almost on the tip of it, you start to get these complexities from citra such as the, you know, such as the, uh, like a little bit of lychee, um, I think a little bit of gooseberry or something like that, but mainly a lychee note in this one. Um, sometimes with, with uh, citra, of course, you can get a little bit of lime, but not really in this beer. And I'm finding the longer that I leave this beer without having a sip of it, the more that roasty, quality from the coffee pushes its way out. The coffee becomes more apparent in the uh, the aftertaste. So I have to admit, you know, it's an unusual beer this one, but I think it's done very tastefully. I think they've managed to balance this one out really quite well. And with a beer like this, you know, when you've got something that's so... When you take the IPA, which is generally quite a smooth and sweet style, and then put something in there like coffee, which is quite a dark, roasty flavour, you've got to get that balance right, and I think they've done it very, very well here. Um, it would be interesting for them to take this base recipe and try it with lots of different coffees. That could maybe be a series of beer that these guys do, kind of similar to what Douglas Bregory did with the um, their... Imperial Stouts, they were um, doing Imperial Stouts with beans from a Swedish roastery, they've done them, they did them with Hunter and Son when they were still in existence down in Bristol, and I think they've done one recently with somebody else too, so maybe doing coffee IPAs is something that um, Overtone can, can play with actually, just use different coffee beans and, you know, educate people, craft beer drinkers about coffee beans, that could be a very good idea for them going forward, but this is a lovely beer and if you get the chance to try it, I recommend that you do, it's definitely been a bit of an education for me, and um, if you do have any coffee IPA recommendations, let me know in the comment section below, it's a, it's a, a new kind of sub style if you like, that I'd like to, uh, to explore a little bit more. In terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then, um, Yeah, mid-bodied beer, at the top end of mid-bodied I would say. Carbonation is very smooth in this one. Um, it's a big oily mouthfeel this, it really is quite an oily mouthfeel. Um, and I like that about it. It's one of the most oily beers that I've had from Scotland on this trip to be honest with you. Um, uh, I would say the malt base in this one, very smooth, but at the same time it's well balanced out with those roasty, more roasty flavours from the coffee. So the middle of your palate has a good balance between smoothness, there's a little bit of sweetness there in the middle of the palate like I was saying, um, but then the coffee is sitting there at the front, so it's kind of smooth and sweet at the back of the palate, then almost in the middle it's a bit more roasty. Then of course at the front of the palate you've got the, uh, the fruity notes, but a nice little bit of bitterness from this one. I think we're talking maybe... This one must be about 50 or 60 IBUs, it'll be something like that. Um, so you've got a good little bit of bitterness in there, both from the hops and from the uh, the coffee. I'd say it's mainly from the coffee, to be honest with you. Nice bit of a juicy, fruity note. And, um, you know, it just everything goes together in this beer. This is one of these ones that isn't too punchy in any one regard. It's all about how these different flavours fit together. But I think Overtone have done an awesome job of this. I need to try one of their more kind of straight-up beers, I think, to, to get a feel for what they do. It'd be cool to try a stout and, uh, you know, a regular kind of IPA. So I'll keep an eye out for that. But as it stands, this is a really beautiful beer. And I think they've done a great job with it. So hopefully they do more with deer green and different coffee beans and stuff like that. So fingers crossed that that works out for them. But, you know, if they can do a beer like this, I think they've got a pretty bright future ahead of them. And cool, of course, to try another new brewery who I hadn't heard of before. So, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one is the Rwandan Coffee IPA. It's 7.5% from Overtone Brewing Company in Glasgow in a collaboration with Deer Green. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Overtone Brewing as well. Do give me some other coffee IPA recommendations if any come to mind. But it's been great to review this one for you and I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys very soon. Until the next time, slant you just now and I'll catch you guys later. The Rwandan Coffee IPA from Overtone Brewing Company in Yoker in Glasgow. Slant you, cheers.